All right, this is John Kodo with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And today, actually, it's, we're one week away from the Woodstock Fruit Festival. I got my shirt on, Woodstock Fruit Festival coming up, upstate New York. And I hope to see all you guys there. If you guys are coming to the Woodstock Fruit Festival, there's still time to come. So I want to check the links down below or go to thewoodstockfruitfestival.com to check it out, learn about it, and sign up. To come so I can see you there and you'll have a great week. I guarantee it. And be sure to use a discount code OKRAW uh, to get $100 off your admission price to help you guys out. Anyways, I'm getting I'm getting ready to head out to the Woodstock Fruit Festival. I know the Woodstock Fruit Festival people are making last minute arrangements to get all the fruit and all the food that they'll be serving people because you have unlimited fruits and vegetables at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. And that's just one of the main activities, which is eating, hanging out with others, meeting other people that are into the same style of diet as you, um, having fun, just relaxing, going to lectures, talks, all kinds of different activities, all kinds of cool stuff. Anyways, uh, this event is about the food since, you know, it's called the Woodstock Fruit Festival. <laughs> so fruit is one of the main foods that's being served there. And based on my testing in prior years, the Woodstock Fruit Festival serves poor quality fruit to the people attending. Now this may come as a surprise to some of you guys, and to some of you guys it isn't, uh, but first I want to explain what I mean by poor quality fruit, because you know, I could eat a fruit, and I could give a piece to my girlfriend, the same exact fruit, and to me it tastes like crap, to her it's like, oh my god, this is the best in the world. And we're all like that because we're all totally different with our taste buds, and I've you know, because I've been into raw food since 1995, probably tasted more fruit than she has, and she's only been doing it a couple years. So I kind of really know what good fruit tastes like. And I know a lot of people coming to Woodstock, they're new into it, to learn, to hang out, to meet people, and to experience the lifestyle and to have fun. And they may not know what good fruit tastes like. So that's a problem because some, pe some people that attend it could be like, oh man, the fruit was amazing. And some people, you know, maybe if you're into it longer and kind of know more, or like maybe it's not so good and so what I have here is I have what's called a Brix meter so the Brix meter it, you know basically takes the judgment that a person could have if the fruit is good or not out of it because the Brix meter basically does one thing uh, it measures the, ju the juice or the sap of a fruit or vegetable and this is what it does. It says, within a given species of plant, the crop with a higher refractive index will have a higher sugar content, higher mineral content, higher protein content, and greater specific gravity or density. This adds up to a sweeter tasting, more minerally nutritious food with lower nitrate and water content, lower freezing point, and better storage attributes. And isn't, what this we want, isn't this what we all want? We want good quality fruit. I mean, I go out of my way to grow my own vegetables and fruits in my backyard, you know, to add things to the soil, to harvest them when they're only ripe. And this is what we all hopefully aspire to do to have the highest quality stuff. But at Woodstock, I've had poor quality fruit. Um, and so anyways, uh, how, this, how the refractometer works is the uh, basically uh, you put a juice, and I'll demonstrate here with an apple. This is a local apple, and we'll see, maybe I buy poor quality fruit. I go out of my way to buy the highest quality fruit that I can and I'm sure you guys try to do that also but if you guys are shopping at the local you know grocery store or even Whole Foods you know sometimes they have poor quality fruit because there are standards in agriculture and unfortunately they're not always being met anyways we got a piece of that apple we're uh, basically squeezing out some of the juice if we can all right one two drops there let's try that again we got some pulp there I want to get just the juice on here for you. All right, there's some juice on there. Maybe I'll eat that apple. This apple sucks ass. That's what I think of it, like, through my taste buds. All right, looking at it, it's about 11. So then, with the number on the refractometer, you go to this chart. In the chart here, apples, a poor apple six. So if it was like reading six, it would be a poor apple. And some of the fruit, actually, there's, there's only a few things that I tested that were really poor. 
uh, but an average apple is 10 and uh, a good apple is 14. So my apple that I'm eating myself that I bought at a local farm here is 11. So it's one point above average. Now, I don't want you guys to be average. I want you guys to be above average and excel and reach for the stars and eat the highest quality fruit because when you taste an average apple, like to me, it's like I, I almost want to spit it out. I have a friend who's a fruit snob. He grows all his own fruit. He won't eat, he probably rarely ever eats fruits that he didn't grow himself unless he's traveling. And like some of the stuff at his place to me tastes amazing, to him tastes like garbage. So it's all a reference point. But to me, an average apple, it's just not worth my time. I mean, I'll probably juice it. I'll, I'll juice these apples, uh, you know, because that'll just add flavor to my juice. But just eating them would not be fun for me. And I want you guys to have the best Woodstock experience. So anyways, I'm going to sum this video up really quick for you guys, since I know a lot of you guys have short attention spans. And hopefully you guys don't also have short attention spans in bed with your partner, because that would suck for both parties involved because um, you guys aren't going to watch this 25 minute video but basically here it comes down to this you know if you guys are purchasing fruit from the grocery store likely you guys are purchasing some poor quality fruit Woodstock you know purchases its fruit and vegetables at the wholesale produce terminal which is where the grocery stores buy their fruit uh, they don't go down there with a bricks meter um, they probably don't send a guy down there or a girl to check and taste each bite of fruit when they buy cases and pallets of fruit so they're bad, bad to get, bound to get <laughs> literally some bad apples and so what I want and I, and if you guys want it too hey thumbs this video up and post your comments down below if you guys want Woodstock to serve better fruit and be an example and model and just blow everybody away with the quality of the produce literally every piece of fruit or every case of fruit they buy or not every case but every pallet say they're buying a case of or a pallet of fruits from a certain farm Lano farms in you know California and they're buying watermelons they should test it and make sure that minimum I'm saying it should be at least average minimum if not average maybe they should all be good but you know sometimes some produce that you get in the store is just not always good but say they're going to the wholesale produce supplier or you guys are going to a grocery store there's two different kinds of watermelons they have different stickers on them they're from two different farms you know one, one from one farm could have different growing practices they could grow them you know, organically, they could add trace minerals, they could add rock dust, maybe they harvest them a little bit riper, and they're gonna have higher bricks than that one sitting next to it. So I'm just saying that when Woodstock buys the produce, they should check it and make sure that, you know, there's minimum standards, whatever they set should be, because in the end, the food and the fruit is gonna taste better for us. Now, yes, this is a big undertaking to do this. You know, when they go and buy the fruit, they're gonna have to send a guy to test it, or at least minimum, you know have the produce companies that before they ship it out you know test it and make sure that they're sending us good fruit I mean Woodstock they're spending probably the biggest part of their budget is actually on the food costs and I know because they're spending so much money with some vendors the vendors want to keep them happy and so this is what I want Woodstock to you know raise the bar on higher quality fruit and in this video basically I'm gonna go around and test some of the fruit that I've ate at Woodstock before a lot of it, you know, is actually in the average, the good, few excellent range. And, of course, there's some poor. And But I want all you guys to always improve and better your diet, whether that means, you know, improving the quality of the fruit or just improving your diet by eating more fruits and vegetables or just make it most of your diet like I have. Um, my other thoughts about the Woodstock Fruit Festival, just real quick, on the food is... Uh, you know, I do want them to buy more organic food. And yeah, leave your comments down below regarding these topics. You know, last year was supposedly going to be the last year they had it. So they, you know, they did the bare minimum. They bought some organic, but they bought a lot of uh, conventional stuff. I do want them to, you know, strive to increase the bar and eat, buy more organic. I don't even eat 100% organic myself here. I eat 90, 95%. You know, certain things I'll eat non-organic because they're not, they're on the clean 15 list. But other things I won't touch um, with a 10-foot pole unless it is organic. So I want to encourage, you know, Woodstock to buy things, especially on the Dirty Dozen list, that are organic. Another thing that popped up last year is that they are having, um, they had some irradiated food last couple of years. You know, irradiated fruits that are being imported. Now, you know, I don't see a problem with irradiated fruits if that's what you guys want to eat. I, I'm not here to judge and tell you guys what you should or shouldn't do. But what I will say is that, you know, some people ate this irradiated fruit without knowing that it was actually irradiated. So Woodstock, if they do serve irradiated fruit, I would just uh, ask them to just label it that say it's irradiated fruit uh, to let people know that 
if they want to eat a radiated fruit or not. A lot of people doesn't bother, you know, Chris Kendall is like, yeah, I don't care, man, as long as it tastes good. I mean, that's cool. I, I personally don't choose to eat a radiated fruit. I'd rather eat some organic, you know, grapes or something else instead. And so I think it's just like the GMO labeling law, you know, let's not try to like hide things. Let's try to be totally transparent, as transparent as possible while meeting everybody's needs. Now, my final thoughts on the food is that uh, this event is a uh, the, called the Woodstock Fruit Festival, although they use the same chef that works at the 801010 events. So she tends to make a lot of 801010 style recipes that are low fat. And as much as many people attending the Woodstock Fruit Festival are low fat. Right, and that being know. said, it always seems that every year I go to the Woodstock Fruit Festival, the first couple days are like 801010, pretty low fat. Then the last couple, you know, then midweek they start putting out a lot of avocados and stuff at every meal. I would just encourage uh, Woodstock to, you know, because it is not an 80 10 10 event, you know, make things kind of more flavor, add some more spices and herbs and make things a bit more flavorful instead of being more plain Jane. I think a lot more people will enjoy it. And of course, kind of like, you know, it's the reference point. You know, some people like the food there, some people don't like it. Well, hey, let's, there's always several different meal options at dinner time. It might be good to have one that's always a little bit higher in fat and some that are lower in fat some that have a little more spices, some that have a little bit less, so that you can meet everybody's needs. I mean, this is the goal, I think, in my opinion, so that everybody's needs are met instead of just a small, select few. And that's why I'm making this video, not for any other reason, not to rag on the Woodstock Fruit Festival. I love the Woodstock Fruit Festival. It's like the, one of my favorite things to do all year. So the other point that I like to say is that I want to encourage the Woodstock Fruit Festival to buy more local fruit or get fruit sourced directly from the farmers as fresh as possible. Because when you're going through the standard wholesale supply chain, the quality tends not to be as high as if you're going farmer direct. That's why many of you guys, including myself, shop at the farmer's markets. And I just actually, in many cases, cut out the middleman by growing my own fruits and vegetables in my backyard, which are generally the highest quality, but not always. And so at the end of this video, I'm going to share with the Woodstock Fruit Festival a way they can actually source some good quality, high quality, uh, fresh fruits, uh, especially tropical fruits, from South Florida if they want to. My final suggestion for the Woodstock Fruit Festival and for you guys is to compost. You know, it makes me sad. I think one year they composted all the fruit scraps and all this kind of stuff, but every other year they didn't want to basically pay or pick up the tab or do whatever was possible to compost all the fruit scraps because all the fruit scraps are rotting in the landfill and creating methane gas. I think this is atrocious. You know, I do my own composting here. None of my vegetable waste from my garden or from what I eat goes anywhere except in my 12 compost bins and I have a video maybe I'll post down below uh, reviewing all of them um, you know so I think they should be composting the food and once again I want you guys' comments you know I'm just an attendee a presenter at the Woodstock Fruit Festival and I want to know what you guys think think they should compost think they should buy more local food think they should buy more organic food think they should even bricks test their food I don't know post their comments Post your comments down below, and of course, I want you guys to, you know, do the same thing. Woodst I want Woodstock to do. Bricks test your food to get the highest quality stuff. Minimally taste test it when you can. Buy local, you know, get as much organic as you can, and of course, be sure to compost, you know, your food. I guess without further ado, let's go ahead. That's the summary of this video, so you guys could turn it off now if you guys don't want to watch the rest. But uh, next, let's go ahead and get into the fun that I had last year at Woodstock, uh, checking all the fruit out and giving you my opinions. We're in where I'm at today is a 2015 Woodstock Fruit Festival taking place here in New York. And this is a celebration of fruit and people that love to eat a fruit and vegetable based diet. And so, I mean, in Woodstock Fruit Festival in the title, there's a location, Woodstock, New York, which is, we're near Woodstock, New York, but there's also the big word fruit in there. So in this episode, I'm gonna cover one of the most important things at the festival here, the fruit, and more importantly, the fruit quality. Because if we are all celebrators of fruit, we should be having the highest quality fruit and not just the standard crap that is available. So hopefully they've gone out of their way to obtain the highest quality fruit possible so us fruities here can enjoy it all. So what I'm gonna do for you guys in this episode is explain to you guys how you guys could get the highest quality fruit, you know, select the highest quality fruit, how you could measure the highest quality fruit, and if they got it here, and if they don't have it here, you know, how can they improve that, and how can you guys improve that so you, you guys get the highest quality uh, fruit and vegetables so that you could be the healthiest and also have the most amazing taste sensations 
in your mouth. So in order to do this, what I'm gonna do is actually we're gonna go ahead into the kitchen in the dining hall and I'm gonna go ahead and test like as much of the fruit as I possibly can here and show you guys if it's like, you know, poor, average, good, or excellent, uh, you know, based on uh, bricks testing or the brick scale. So anyways, let's go ahead and head in the kitchen. We'll explain to you more about the bricks and we'll get into testing the fruit here at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. So now we're in the dining hall and uh, this is the area where all the food is served at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. And for breakfast today, they had some orange fresh honeydews that are already gone, <laughs> but there's still lots of watermelon left. So, you know, people are eating watermelon this morning. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test the quality of the watermelon. Now there's a couple ways to do this. I mean, number one, you can actually just eat it and see how good it tastes. You know, our taste buds are the best, you know, way to know if fruit is good or not. The problem is if you don't have a reference point. You know, you may have bought watermelons from the store and you think, oh man, that's a good watermelon, but is it really good? It might be good compared to other ones you've have, have had, but if all those are not good, this one might be better than those, but not as good as watermelons could taste. Because I've been doing this now for 20 years, I've had a lot of experience with different kinds of watermelons, different kinds of fruits, and so I have a pretty good reference range on if something's really good or something's really bad. And unfortunately, most of the food I purchase, you know, it through standard means, whether that's at the wholesale produce terminal or, you know, the health food store, it's not, it's subpar in my opinion, and I'm, I'm like a fruit snob, yeah, you know, so, you know, I guess the only way to really do it is to have your own fruit trees and grow your own, because then you're going to be growing some of the highest stuff. So, besides tasting the fruit with your taste buds to have a subjective viewpoint, the way to test your fruit objectively is with this device right here. And this is actually just known as a portable refractometer. And uh, this portable refractometer, this is what it looks like right here. You basically just put a little bit of a juice on this little uh, part right here. And then you look through it. It's like a spyglass, you know, if you're a pirate, hey matey. And then, uh, and then you're gonna see inside there, you can't see inside there, but there's a, it's a scale. It goes from like zero to 32. And that's the bricks number. And in general, you know, if you if you just took at the common looking looking at bricks, like bricks, people relate it to sugar content. So winemakers, they know what a bricks meter is because they want to only harvest the grapes when it's at the highest bricks content. Uh, so there's the most sugar because it's the sugar that then gets fermented into the alcohol for the wine. Um, so yeah, but it, the bricks meter measures much more than that. So this is what you could know objectively versus subjectively, you know, if you're tasting it, if a fruit is good or not, because they have a little chart right here. And this is known as a bricks chart. It's actually called the refractive index of crop juices. And it'll rate, you know, a lot of the different fruits, you know, poor, average, good, or excellent. And of the conventional produce that I've tested and purchased, or even organic produce for that matter, just you know, agricultural produce from the agricultural industry. You know, it's usually been in the poor to average, sometimes good, and in some instances, excellent. But in, in general, the, you know, the fruit quality is very poor when you're just buying it from the industry because it's the agriculture industry, it's the produce industry, and they're here not to make highest quality fruit to you know, feed all us fruit eaters, at Woodstock, but they're there to make a buck. They want to make a living. They want to, you know, sell their products so that they can make profit. And they don't really care about the, the quality of the fruit like we would like to demand. And I think this is very sad because fruit and produce is grown for quantity, not quality. So the more poundage they can produce, the more money they get paid, even if the stuff tastes like crap. And it's really sad that Americans and most people around the world you know, eat industrialized, grown agricultural products such as fruits and vegetables and they're very poor quality. And this is what people think fruit is. People think a peach is something that's hard and crunchy and has no sweet flavor and it just sucks. And this is completely 
far from the truth. I mean, a peach to me is something that you pick right off the tree. It literally falls in your hand. It's sweet, it's juicy, it gets all over your mouth. <laughs> You'll need like to wipe down with a towel afterwards and it just melts in your mouth and it is so delicious. And so, you know, the quality of the fruit is one aspect, you know, so the bricks level is one aspect. Another aspect is how is the fruit grown? Is it organic? Is it conventional? And I'm not even going to get into that. Of course, I always encourage you guys to purchase organic fruits and vegetables whenever you can and whenever you can afford it. Um, you know, they're going to be uh, better in my opinion in most cases because generally they're taking care of the soil more. They're adding more nutrients in the soil, which means the fruits are going to be more nutritious. And in addition, um, the other thing with the organics is that they're not spraying the toxic pesticides, herbicides, fungicides on the plants that then you will ingest secondhand and create more toxicity in your body. That being said, you know, um, growing your own food is the best. So the next thing I want to get into is actually what does the BRICS meter test? So as I mentioned earlier, people think the simple uh, man's terms, it's only sugar content, but let me read this off here for you. It says, within a given species of plant, the crop with a higher refractive index or BRICS will have a higher sugar content, higher mineral content, higher protein content, and greater specific gravity or density. This adds up to a sweeter tasting, more minerally nutritious food with lower nitrate and water content, lower freezing point, and better storage attributes. So, you know, bricks is a lot more than just the sugar content. Now, on the back here, this is an example, right? This is a garden beans grown under, you know, better than ideal situations, you know, using like nutrients and growing in good soil versus gro grocery store beans. So the bricks on the grocery store beans were 4.2. It tasted like garbage. The bricks on the garden beans, not even grown under ideal situations, was 6.1, and the taste was decent. And so then, you know, and then they have, go into pH, the pH was actually more alkaline on the garden beans than the grocery store beans. So yes, you could be eating produce and it's less, it's more acidifying, and we want to live in an alkaline condition. And the dry matter was lower on the grocery store beans than the garden beans, which was a lot higher. Now, the, the part that interests me the most actually is right down here. It's the nutritional quality on the bottom here. And on the nutritional quality of the higher bricks grown produce, you know, the calcium was over double. They had twice the amount of calcium. It had twice the amount of phosphorus, over twice the amount of potassium, you know, over double the amount of copper, more iron, over twice the amount of zinc, and many people may be deficient in zinc. Is that because we're not eating enough? No, it might be because we're eating poor quality food because the soils are not being enriched with these very important elements and trace minerals and uh, other minerals, and the manganese was higher. But in addition, I wanna let you guys know this, that the protein was almost double in the homegrown garden beans. So now you could get twice the amount of protein through plants, you know, without extra calories. So basically what this means is that you're gonna have higher quality food, which means you need to eat less food to get the same given nutrition. And as I go on in my raw foods journey, one of the things I strive to do is actually eat less and get more. You know, I mean, I'm not a you know, runner and run 10 miles a day and I don't do massive strenuous exercise. I do some computer work, I go out in the garden for half the day, and yes, I need some calories to survive, but nutrients and phytonutrients and phytochemicals, vitamins and minerals are far too much underplayed in the raw foods diet. And I really believe you guys should focus on eating these phytonutrients, phytochemicals, and highly nutritious foods, you know, with a lot of nutrients and with the least amount of calories because I'm in this diet for my health and for longevity, you know, and, and this is my style for what I'm gonna do to meet my specific goals, right? So in any case, let's go ahead and get into testing this watermelon. And uh, so how this works is, on this chart here, you'll see there's all different kinds of fruits over here, and there's different numbers on the chart. So for example, on watermelons, uh, poor watermelon is eight on the BRICS tester, average is 12, good is 14, and excellent is 16. So uh, where do you guys think the watermelon will be at? Poor, average, good, or excellent? 
All right, well, let's go ahead and find out. So how this works is very simple. You're just gonna go ahead and take your Brix tester. They do have analog and digital versions. I do encourage you guys to get the analog version. It tells you more information than the simple digital version does. And uh, all you need to do is you just need to take uh, just some of the watermelon here and maybe we'll try to get like a, a piece that's like a little bit red. So in bricks testing, I always try to use like, you know, a pretty ripe fruit versus a not ripe fruit. So this one actually looks pretty red. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take it and we're just gonna go ahead and squeeze some drops of juice on the tester there. And that's all it takes. We're just gonna go close the hatch and then we're gonna look into this into the light. And then it looks like it's approximately 10 and a half. So 10 and a half on my little guide here is actually a poor watermelon is eight and average watermelon is 12. This watermelon is not even average. This is between poor and average right in the middle that they're serving at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Now, I personally believe that if you guys took a Brix tester to the produce store, to the wholesale produce terminal, to the farmer's market, and you sample different watermelon brands, because every different grower, when it's harvested, their growing practices, you know, make a difference in the bricks. If they took one of these to the produce terminal, when they shop for Woodstock, they could go around and get, you know, watermelons with the highest bricks content. That still might not even be excellent, but maybe it'd even be good instead of serving subpar fruit here that's even, you know, between poor and average at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. And that's just my personal opinion on that. And that's why you guys, I believe every one of you guys watching this that are into fruit, into eating fruits and vegetables should own one of these because if every consumer who ate fruit in the whole country had one of these and tested their fruit and we would just not accept buying poor or average fruit, it has to be at least good, then guess what? The farmers would lose their money. They wouldn't sell the crap. People wouldn't be taking the crap and they'd be forced to improve the quality of the fruit that you're getting. Unfortunately, there's no motivation for them to do this because they, get, they, they make their money based on the poundage and once again, not on how good it is. That's why it's imperative in this day and age, in my opinion, to have the highest quality fruit to literally grow yourself. In any case, uh, this was the watermelon between poor and average. Let's go ahead and check some of the other fruit here they're serving at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. All right, so check it out. As luck would have it, I got one of the last orange fleshed honeydew melons and wow this actually smells pretty amazing to me this smells a lot better than the watermelon did which didn't really have a nice odor to it and so what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and check the bricks uh, of the orange flesh honeydew now you know I want to let you guys know that my uh, girlfriend was eating some of this stuff yesterday and she had some that were like really ripe and she's like oh my god these are super sweet super good and then she had a few that weren't optimally ripe, right? So the bricks level can change depending on the fruit itself. But in general, I like to say that a standard, you know, one single grower, so like, you know, a certain farm, I don't know if there's stickers on these, but a certain farm in general, their bricks will be pretty consistent within a range, of course. Some fruits are riper, some are less, and that will affect the bricks also. So anyways, on these orange flesh honeydews, there's no listing for orange flesh honeydews, but honeydews are surely on here. And honeydews, uh, a poor honeydew is eight, uh, average honeydew is 10, a good honeydew is 12, and an excellent honeydew is 14. So let's go ahead and check out this honeydew. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take a scoop of the fruit flesh right here. And we're just gonna go ahead and uh, take and squeeze some of the juice out of it. And man, this thing is so juicy, way more juicier than even that watermelon. And we'll put that lid down and we're just gonna kinda look in here. Oh my God, this is insane. So these honeydews are scoring out at a 17, which is actually higher than the watermelon. And on this chart here, the uh, honeydews, are 14 was excellent this is like 17 these are above excellent man so if you're at woodstock you're gonna want to eat these orange flush honeydews instead of the watermelon because man these kick ass on the bricks tester so now we're here at a place at woodstock in the dining hall where they have all these fruits laid out i guess they got apples bananas um, dates uh, some tangerines and this is available like 24 hours a day seven days a week for the whole time Woodstock is here. So if you're here, this is open season. Eat as much as you want, including the organic daglet dates, which, you know, they're super good. I've been eating a bunch. But anyways, I wanna share with you guys the quality of the fruit here. 
Uh, so first we're gonna go ahead and check these apples. Now these apples, the green apples, are organic. And uh, what we're gonna do is we just need to get some juice out on here. So we'll just have to just peel this back. And we're just gonna go ahead and squeeze out uh, you know, some of the juice on there. Wow, this is a mealy apple, man. We're not getting any juice, it's just, it's just meal. Man, that's really just like, wow, mealy apple, not getting a lot of juice out of there. Let me see if I could get some juice out. <laughs> man. Here, try this one now. All right, so. <laughs> now we got Mike Velocity here and he's squeezing out the juice with his big vegan uh, muscles. All right, let's get the muscle in there, man. <laughs> oh, give him a <laughs> All right, anyways, he's squeezing out the is, juice. Is that, is that good enough, John? Yeah, he's squeezing the juice out of a red apple, so I guess maybe we'll try this red apple first. Yeah. All right, a little bit more, man. Oh, man, look at that, yeah. all that juice squeezing out. All right, let's go ahead, <laughs> check him out at Fruit and Strength on YouTube. All right, so the red apple, anyways, looks like we're uh, coming out at about 13.75. Uh, so if we take a look at our chart, an apple, a poor apple is six, an average apple is 10, a good apple is 14, an excellent apple is 18. So this apple was between average and good uh, for the red ones. Let me go ahead and see if I could get enough juice from one of the green ones now. All right, so you guys just saw the red apple actually, which the red apple is not organic. Now we're gonna go ahead and see if Mike can squeeze out some juice right. out of our green apple for me. <sighs> oh yeah, look at that, man. Oh, raise it up. S squeeze out the juice. Oh yeah, juice that apple, Mike. Juice that apple. <laughs> okay, we're making a mess here. That's good enough, right? All right, you don't need a juicer when you got Mike Velocity of fruit and strength. All right, so we got some juice on there now. And uh, checking this out, this organic apple is about at 11 and a half on the bricks testing. And uh, 11 and a half is actually a little bit above average. So. Bricks wise, the red apple is a better apple, even though it's still not an excellent apple, but the green apple is organic. So for me personally, for my choices, although the red apple may taste better, I would actually personally go with the green apples that are organic because, you know, bricks is only one aspect of, you know, that you should take into consideration when purchasing a fruit, organic or not is another. Of course, also the nutrient content uh, mineral content and how it was grown is yet another factor. So yeah, in this episode, we're mostly featuring the bricks. In an ideal world, I like to have organic fruit that's high in bricks, and that'd be the best of uh, both worlds. All right, so now we're back at the table that's like 24-7, like fruit you could eat, and they've been putting out these guys. These are uh, Murcot, like uh, tangerines, and actually these guys are actually imported from Peru as are the avocados that they're serving. Now, I always encourage you guys to purchase local, in-season produce whenever possible. And while the tangerines are in season in Peru, they're not in season here, so I don't like to eat them out of season. And generally, imported fruit, generally, but not always, not of super high quality. So we're gonna go ahead and test the bricks on this next. And uh, you know, uh, looking at my chart here, there is no tangerine or murcot category on here. And the best thing to do would be to you know, have reference ranges for this particular variety of tangerine because just because it's an apple doesn't mean all apples are gonna be within this range. Like, you know, for example, like the Red Delicious and the Granny Smith will have a, a similar range, but be a little bit different, right? And so uh, these guys, the closest that we have on our chart here are the oranges. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, test one of these guys up on the or against the oranges. On oranges, uh, poor orange is six, an average orange is 10, a good orange is 16, and an excellent orange is 20. So let's go ahead and check out uh, the bricks on these tangerines. Now, I don't think I need Michael Velocity to do this. We're just gonna go ahead and pierce the skin here, and uh, oranges are really easy to get the juice out. And just squeeze some juice out on there. Pop that down, we're gonna look at this. All right, so these tangerines, are about nine on the bricks meter. So according to this, the oranges is, uh, let's see if it's a 10, it's an average orange. So these tangerines are a little bit below average, but above poor. So, I mean, that's not super high fruit quality here for the fruit festival, in my opinion. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, maybe, I'm gonna try to test the bananas next. Now, 
Normally you need to, you know, test something in a liquid state, like if it's mush, it's not gonna work. So you could even test like leafy greens, like kale and whatnot. So you'd wanna juice it first, then you could like put it through like a garlic press to like get some of the juice out. You just need a few drops, right? Now bananas are like a mushy fruit, so it's gonna be significantly harder to test for. So I don't know if we could get a really ripe banana, maybe it's almost oozing with the juice here. Okay, that's a one ripe banana, and all the bananas here at Woodstock that I've observed are actually not organic. And uh, you know, I would encourage you guys to purchase organic whenever possible and whenever you can. And so on this banana here, let's just squeeze the banana. Urgh, it's kind of mushing and not making too much juice. <laughs> it's just making a mess. <laughs> all right, I don't know, maybe if I could just put some, some of the banana mush. I don't know if that's gonna work, but we'll see what we get. All right, so yeah, like the banana mush is just not working. I don't know how to juice a banana. I haven't figured that one out yet. And if you do, you'll let me know. But anyways, on the bananas, uh, you can test your bananas. And bananas, a poor banana is eight, an average banana is 10, a good banana is 12, and an excellent banana is 14. And I don't know what these are. You know, I do know that from tasting bananas when I am visiting the tropics, which is when the only time I really enjoy eating bananas, you know, most imported bananas are picked far too early and they're not given the appropriate amount of nutrients to create high quality fruit. It'd be my opinion that these bananas are somewhere between like average good or something like that, if we're lucky. All right, let's go ahead and uh, we'll come back at you when there's another meal on at Woodstock when they put out additional fruits to eat. We'll be testing the bricks for you as well so you guys will know the quality of the fruit that they're serving here at the Woodstock Fruit Festival 2015. So one of the cool things here at the Woodstock Fruit Festival is that they have an orange juice station just across the way where you can get orange juice like unlimited, you know, uh, during the breakfast hours. So they have cases and cases and cases of oranges from California. So at least these guys aren't imported, but what is the quality? So these guys are not organic. They're fancy 88 count uh, oranges. Let's go ahead and pull the box off here. As you guys can see, there's some uh, delicious oranges in there. Once again, we're going to check the bricks and to remind you guys, oranges, uh, poor orange is six, average orange is 10, good orange is 16, excellent orange is 20. Got the bricks meter out here. Let's go ahead and uh, grab one of these guys, pierce the skin, and uh, squeeze some juice out. All right, there we go, lots of juice. And let's uh, see what we got. All right, so this orange looks like it's at a 13. So a 13 on an orange is between average and good. So this is not even good oranges, man. They're serving at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. It's right in the middle of average and good. Now, once again, bricks is only one way to measure the quality of the fruit, which measures the sugars, but also the total mineral content, which I'm not really gonna get into advanced topics in this video about how to see if there's minerals in the fruit. It's, in my opinion, that conventional agriculture that's putting basically uh, you know, man-made chemical fertilizers on the crops are not adding the level of minerals that they should and they're not nurturing the soil how they should so that the plants produce, you know, the sweetest and healthiest food ever. And the other thing that this is not necessarily measuring is the acidity. So I've tasted the orange juice here and it's actually, you know, for me it's a bit acid and, you know, eating too many acid fruits you know, uh, can mess up your enamel. So I don't necessarily recommend drinking lots of orange juice. And if you do, minimally rinse your mouth out afterwards. And then of course, you're gonna wanna brush your teeth to get the acids off your teeth. And I wanna remind you guys that fully ripe fruit has less acid. So I've, you know, I've eaten pineapples that are quite acid and pineapples that are ripened on the plant, much less acid. I've had oranges off the tree that are fully ripe and have no acidity and it's just all this unripe fruit that's picked prematurely, has higher level of acids, lower sugar content, lower mineral content, and it's not as good for you guys. So I mean, I always wanna encourage you guys to do the best you can, right? Now you might like, don't go orthorexic on me and thinking, man, all the, everything in the store is crap, I can't eat it and I can't eat nothing, and what am I gonna eat, right? do the best you can you know given the choice between like these oranges are maybe not even the highest quality and hamburgers 
what's the better choice? Oranges. The choice between this and white rice, what's the better choice? I'd eat this, man. Uh, you know, the, and you guys need to come up with your own criteria on, on what's all right for you. Like, you know, I probably wouldn't eat these if I had organic oranges, even if the organic oranges were a lower bricks because I don't want to support the industry that promotes destroying of the earth with chemicals and fertilizers that destroy the soil microbiome, uh, you know, and it's always about good, better, best. Do the best you can, get the highest quality fruit you can, and if you own a Brix meter, you will be empowered to know, you know, how good the fruit is, and at a given store, you could check different produce items or the farmer's market, and you could buy the highest quality fruit at that time, at that market, that meet your specifications, you know, Basically, knowledge is power, and the bricks meter empowers you to have more knowledge. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and check the lychees. We got some lychees here imported from Taiwan. I normally like to eat the lychees imported from Mexico, just for whatever reason. I don't really like to eat these unless there's like no other options. And uh, on my standard chart here, actually lychees are not listed because they're a very specialty fruit, so I had to actually do some internet searches and found out that a lychee that is poor is 11, an average lychee is 14, a good lychee is 17, and an excellent lychee is 20. So let's see what they're serving here at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Now when picking lychees, man, I always encourage you guys to pick nice, like, dark ones. Here's like a light one, here's a dark one, right? Uh, pick the dark ones. So open this guy up, I like to just basically uh, stick my fingernail in the top, peel back the skin, and peel it all the way around. And uh, you can see like how it looks kind of, oops, brown at the top. That's getting a bit old. So we're gonna go ahead and squeeze this guy on my refractometer, get some juice, and uh, we're gonna look at that. All right, so this is a good solid 17 and a half. So 17 and a half is actually just above good on my bricks chart. Let's go ahead and move down the way and check out the long-ons next. And actually, I like long-ons better than lychee. So now I'm gonna go ahead and test another kind of mandarin they have here at Woodstock. It's also from Peru, since it's not uh, you know, citrus season here in the States at present time. And this is a different kind of tangerine. I tested the Murcots earlier, and we're gonna go ahead and test this one. And just uh, squeeze out some juice there. All right, looks like these tangerines are just under 13, so maybe like 12.75. And uh, on the chart here, which we're looking at oranges, uh, oranges, an average orange is 10, a good orange is 16, so this is actually below good. This is a little bit above average. Let's go ahead and move over to the long ons, one of my favorite uh, fruits here. Now these are actually from Florida, and actually also organic, I was told. So, uh, you know, organic fruit may not actually necessarily have a higher bricks. It depends on the growing practices and also when they were harvested. Hopefully these guys will be high because <laughs> they taste pretty good to me. All right, so we'll take a long on. And once again, these long ons, they're amazing. I love long ons better than lychees, especially when these ones are from the States and those ones are from far away. I always want to encourage you guys to eat as local as you possibly can. So just peel this guy back. And I once again get some juice out of it. Alright, let's look at what we got. So we got about 18, a little bit higher than 18 on the bricks tester. And uh, once again, the long ons are a specialty fruit that are not normally on the index. So I did look that up, and the only data I could find was that long ons can range from 10 being like poor to 21 being excellent. And I don't have the breakdowns of the numbers, but these ones are at 18. So I'd probably say these are like, you know, better than good, a little bit better than good, uh, if I just kind of go with the same numbers as the lychees. So that's definitely good. And I want to always encourage you guys that bricks is one factor in selecting your fruit, you know, whether it's local, whether it's organic or others, that you should also take into consideration. All right, so the next fruits that they're having here for lunch today at the Woodstock Fruit Festival are, they got figs, so they got like unlimited figs here, just pick as many as you want and eat them. That's awesome. And then they got blueberries, so I love to eat blueberries. 
and we're gonna actually check the bricks on the blueberries but it's very difficult to check the bricks on the figs because you need like fig juice out of it and I don't really have any tools to get the juice out and in addition while you know bricks is one test of the quality of the fruit another one is if the fig is ripe and I have my own fig trees and I know when figs are ripe and let me tell you guys these figs are picked way too early they're nowhere near ripe so then they're not even gonna have the highest quality bricks and you know in my opinion it's just kind of hard to buy figs through regular commercial trade or at the store and get them you know at any decent ripeness you know because otherwise they're gonna be going bad really fast but I am gonna try to check the uh, blueberries here so on my list the blueberries uh, a poor blueberry is 8, an average blueberry is 12, a good blueberry is 14, and an excellent blueberry is 18. And since we can't just squeeze a blueberry and squeeze juice out, we're going to have to maybe get some help. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take a towel. It'd be better if I had like a piece of fabric, right? And you're going to put all the blueberry in there and just smush it and get the juice to come through the towel or through the cloth and be like a pantyhose or a nut milk bag actually would be even better. And I don't know if this is going to work or not, but we'll find out. All right, it's kind of just smushing through the towel. <laughs> We're just getting blueberry slop. I mean, I could try to put it on there, but I don't think it's gonna give an accurate reading there because we really need to get a liquid. This is not designed to work with any kind of solids. I mean, that's just not really working. I mean, it says it's around 12, but I don't know because there's all kinds of other stuff in there. But yeah, if it was a 12, which I'm not saying it was, that'd just be an average blueberry. So yeah, that's what's up here, man. There's a lot of average fruit for above average people at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. So another fruit they're serving here at Woodstock are the persimmons. Everybody loves persimmons. I definitely love persimmons, especially when they're off my tree and local and grown in the USA. Unfortunately, these guys are actually not grown in the USA. They're grown outside the country. And uh, you know, certain fruits, before they come into the country, the US government has certain laws that they have to be treated in certain ways. So for example, you guys know that mangoes need to be hot water dipped. And I would still consider mangoes hot water dipped raw because it's only hot water dipped for a small amount of time and the heat really doesn't get all the way in. Although in my opinion, it does affect the fruit quality. Now on the persimmons, you know, that are being imported, they do need to get treated by a different way, not hot water dipped. And actually it's shown on this little sticker here I don't know if you guys can see it, it says EU10, but in the middle it says Gateway to America, and there's a little, you know, um, picture there, and that what this is, this is actually the Redura symbol, and so you want to look on the fruit boxes or fruit labels before you buy fruit, make sure it doesn't have this label, because what it means, it says, uh, treated by irradiation, so you know, I don't want to get irradiated when I get x-rays or anything like that, and I don't want my fruit irradiated, but you know, some people here just seem to eat it. I don't personally believe they should be serving this. And if they are serving this, you know, for people that like me that know what this is, you know, most people here probably have no clue that it's irradiated. So they should minimally label things that are irradiated or not. So, but I'm not interested if it's irradiated or not. I'm interested in the quality of the fruit. So we got a nice uh, persimmon here. Let's see if we get some juice off it. Persimmons are another kind of gummy fruit, not too juicy. Oh, it's nice and drippy there, nice and wet and juicy. We're gonna get a good reading. Now, unfortunately, the uh, persimmons are not on my chart, but I would expect persimmons like to be very high because when I had good persimmons, like I'm like, oh my God, these are so sweet. Wow, and I'm right. These are actually at a 17 and a half on the bricks, so actually that's quite sweet. And I don't know the range of what persimmons should be but i would say just from knowing what i know about persimmons these are probably definitely above average persimmons but they have been irradiated so i still wouldn't eat them i'd rather eat the long ends that might be less bricks but organic you know and grown in the usa and everybody out there needs to make their own decisions based on the facts that they have so i fully promote gmo labeling and think all food should be labeled for gmos and let the consumer decide if you want to eat that or not Likewise, you know, fruit should be labeled organic, conventional, or irradiated, or just let us know what you're, they're doing to the fruit so that people can make the choice if they want to put that in their bodies or not. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and check another fruit's bricks, although I do not have a reference range because it is actually quite a specialty fruit, actually one that actually I don't get to see often. And I really want to encourage you guys a variety. And what I can say about the Woodstock Fruit Festival, although a lot of the fruit you know was low quality there's few things that are actually fairly good quality 
you know, I do admire them and appreciate that they're actually getting a diverse variety. You know, we've had exotic fruits, jackfruit, mamey sapote, chico sapote. We got these muscadine grapes. No, these are not Jabba Tacabas. You know, they got long ons and lychees and, you know, we got three different kinds of mangoes, including Florida mangoes, imported mangoes, and Haitian mangoes, organic. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and check these muscadine grapes. And uh, these grow in the south, so if you're from the south, you guys know what these are. I've had these only on rare occasion, and I really like them because they're, they're highly pigmented. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, pierce the skin here. It's actually quite thin. Oh, man, it squirted me in the eye, man. <laughs> to do an instant replay on that. All right, anyways, we'll get some juice out of there and uh, check this guy out. All right, the muscadine grapes is about 15, a little bit above 15. Once again, I don't have a reference range for the muscadines, but 15, you know, that seems actually fairly high to me, especially compared to, you know, like the tangerines that were actually lower. And so, yeah, I think it's cool. They're getting varieties. One of the varieties of fruits that I would like to see that I'm not seeing here are delicious cactus fruits from Mexico. They're one of my favorite fruits. And I've never seen those at Woodstock, and I know that they're in season this time of year. All right, so you might think that because I'm a fruit fanatic and I'm like so picky on all my fruit and like most of the stuff's not organic and you know, a lot of it's actually lower on the bricks and actually only good or average or even in some cases poor as you guys are seeing, that I'm, I'm not gonna be able to eat anything. Well, you know, I always encourage you guys to do the best you can. I'm here sharing lunch with my beautiful girlfriend. And uh, what we decided to have today for lunch is uh, basically the jackfruit as well as the lame sapote. And to me, these are some of the best fruits that you could be eating because number one, they're very uncommon. You don't normally get jackfruit or lame sapote, especially lame when it's really ripe and optimally ripe like this. A lot of times you could buy them and then they'll go bad before they even go ripe, which is quite sad. And a lot of them, why am I coming to the fruit festival to eat like grapes and apples and oranges? When I could get those anywhere, I'm coming here to eat the special stuff. And let me tell you, I've had some of this mame and the jackfruit, and it is delish. What do you think about the fruit here that we're eating today? I really like the mame. I think it's really a lot better than what I usually buy. <laughs> and the jackfruit was better than the last jackfruit I had, so it's good. Yeah, so I mean, the quality <laughs> here varies widely. There'll be things that are really good, and there'll be things that are maybe not so good. So <laughs> use your taste buds, use a bricks meter to determine that, and I always want you guys to eat the best stuff. So now I'm here, and I'm gonna go ahead and interview some of the attendees here regarding the quality of the produce, and this, their thoughts about the food here in general. So uh, what's your name, and what do you think of the produce here at the Woodstock Food Festival? Well, my name is Bruce Curtis, I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, the, the food was really great this year. Um, lots and lots of good stuff. Uh, I was amazed at some of the qualities and stuff that I could get at home. I would love to see more organic, so I was disappointed in that there are things like organic grapes, non-organic grapes, and, uh, which I never eat, and stone fruits, non-organic stone fruits, which I won't eat because of pesticides. And uh, I really want to see the festival spend a little more money on, on better fruit. But frankly, I mean, there was still a lot to pick from. We, we had, we still had a lot of really good food. Awesome. Yeah, I'd like to see organic bananas too. We really want to see organic bananas. What's going on, everybody? My name is Steve Rakin. I'm from Connecticut. This was my first time coming to the Woodstock Fruit Festival, and I didn't know what to expect. I had seen the videos. I've been kind of following the raw food community, and uh, the food was amazing. I'm coming from a traditional diet, eating meat and different types of foods, and you know, fruits and vegetables from a conventional grocery store. So I noticed a big difference in taste with a lot of the organic and fresh, and especially the, the ripe stuff when it's really ripe. So it was amazing, a great experience. I'm definitely coming back again, telling all my friends, and uh, had a fresh, um, fresh bottle of OJ and feeling amazing this morning. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, man. What did you guys think of that episode where I tested all the fruit at the Woodstock Fruit Festival on my bricks meter? Of course, they have lots of plenty of fruit that's actually quite good, but of course, you know, to my dismay, they also had some fruit that actually wasn't so good. And as much as I travel to find the best fruit around, and check it out, this is where I'm at today on our organic farm, and this is some of the best fruit here in South Florida right now. We got uh, mangoes, avocados, some different light cheese look at these pineapples man you guys don't get these pineapples in the store look at how ripe that is nice and yellow we got bananas we got more light cheese of course the mamey sapote 
We got the red dragon fruits, quite rare. And also things like the uh, passion fruits here. And the cool thing is, I'm in South Florida, I get these fruits, I get to taste all these fruits, and your taste buds, they're the best bricks meter as much as the, you know, the bricks meter is good because it gives you a reference point. You know, like even me and my girlfriend get in arguments sometimes about, oh, this is a really good mango, or this is not a good mango. And to me, it's not a good mango. To her, she loves it, right? And that's cool. Let's check, check it on the bricks meter to see what the bricks meter says. And so like a lot of people come to Woodstock and they might eat the fruit there. They might think, oh, this is great. But to me, who I've traveled around, I've eaten a lot of fruit over the last 21 years since I've been doing a raw diet, I, I know better, right? And I think Woodstock needs to maybe pony up at least minimally, check the bricks of the fruit that they're buying at the produce terminal, uh, you know, there in New York, or even better yet, you know, get local fruit, uh, you know, shipped up to Woodstock, wherever it may be local. So I have a solution for them to do that if they want to. So the fruit you see here is provided by Miami Fruit, and you guys could go online and order Miami Fruit um, direct delivered to you guys from South Florida, um, direct to you guys at miamifruit.org. Uh, and we're gonna have Rain come over. What's up? And uh, Rain is the proprietor and owner of Miami Fruit, and he goes out with his own picker here, and he picks the fruit that he ships out to you guys. And luckily enough, Rain and his girlfriend are coming to Woodstock, so they're already driving up, and they could drive up some fruit to you guys for all of us to enjoy some of this tropical stuff that Woodstock would not be getting otherwise. Try some of those, yo. All right, man, so we're gonna go ahead and try this and see if uh, Rain's stuff that he's getting is good. So what what kind of lychee is this, uh, Rain? Some Brewster lychee. Brewster the lychee. The aromatic and flavorful of the lychee. Oh, wow, so I recommend you guys, like, before you eat any fruit at Woodstock, smell it, please, because I smell this my mouth starts watering, so that's good. That starts getting me in the digestion mode. And once you do that, you're gonna enjoy the fruit even more. Mmm. Man, that's like sweet, juicy, that's small good. little pit. This is a really good lychee, man. If I bricks tested this, I mean, I don't have my bricks tester today, but I think it'd be pretty high up there. Gotta bring the bricks tester from now on. I mean, this, was, this lychee's better than the lychees that like uh, Woodstock got last year. But of course, those ones were imported lychees, and Florida lychees are not going to be in season during Woodstock. So, so try this one. This is an emperor lychee, stolen from the emperor of China way back when. And uh, it's less flavorful, but more fruit. So you get a huge burst mm. of juice. It's really juicy lychee. Every time I come to South Florida, man, rain hooks me up. I'm picking that on fruit. And if you guys aren't going to travel to South Florida to get the fruit, have rain ship it to you, right? I travel for my fruit. It's important to me. I want to get the best stuff. Man, this thing's so big, <laughs> it can barely fit in my mouth. <laughs> and then we got uh, red pataya, which is delicious and high in antioxidants. So you just peel it back the skin so you can get it out like this. But it's like a, a little like pellet, a little pataya pellet. Don't drop it and then compost the <laughs> shells there. I've been eating these. First day I got in, I got uh, 40 pounds of the uh, red patayas, so I know what they should taste like. We're gonna see how rains taste. And I'll tell you guys, if you guys eat five pounds of uh, red pataya, like as a mono meal, like I did, don't worry when your pee is like coming out red like blood. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with your poop. <laughs> it's normal. It's a good, you know, good, uh, keeps you regular. Now, red patayas, they're known for more sweetness than the white, but these are not a sweet fruit. And actually, I appreciate some of the fruits that are lower in sugar, especially high in antioxidants, like the red pataya. I have to say, my vote on these red pataya, I'm going to give them a thumbs up. They're a bit better quality than the ones that I got the first day I got into town. And these are Banana Blondie's favorite banana. These mm -hmm. are called Nam Hua. Mm. Give that a try. Oh my god, I'm having a fruit party in my mouth. <laughs> Alright, so now we're gonna go ahead and try the Namwa banana. So the cool thing is at Woodstock, you know, they basically get like all Cavendish bananas and actually in prior years they haven't actually even been organic. And people love bananas at Woodstock for whatever reason. And I'm gonna say if you guys are gonna get bananas, like get some more exotic rare bananas like the Namwa. Like these have flavors unlike the standard Cavendish banana. They, these really taste like a banana. The Cavendish to me tastes like cardboard. I know a lot of you guys out there love them because that's what you're used to. I like to eat a wide variety of stuff and like fruits is really taste good. Yeah, you know, this is like, it's like eating like a, like a vanilla cream puff. 
like it's really like light and airy and fluffy it's not like hard compact and saw I mean uh, like you know those like ones you buy in the store they gotta ripen up and they're still kind of like greedy almost when you eat them this is like picked at the peak ripeness super delicious I mean these are praying hands bananas which are my favorite banana they have like a slight marshmallow texture to them they're kind of bouncy and kind of firm but still soft and sweet and they're just ripening so they're not perfectly ripe but give that one a try if you can peel that one off all right show, yeah, show yeah, yeah sure. these off. are all stuck together man like a, somebody's hand all right we'll peel that back and there it is all right we're gonna go ahead and try praying hands now bananas you know they should be optimally ripe before you eat them this one probably could go a couple days but i want to try this for you guys on the camera let you guys know Look at that, that's like a flat banana. It's probably really thin. Hmm. <laughs> I definitely have to agree with Rain on that one. Nice and marshmallowy. I mean, right. this is the kind of fruit they should be serving at Woodstock, in my opinion. We'd love to bring it. If any Woodstock uh, people are out there, we'd love to bring some fruit. Yeah, I definitely agree. Rain's got some of the best fruit here in South Florida. He goes to the farms, picks it himself. I have a video, I'll put a link down below if I remember where I actually hung out with Ray today and went to some of the farms he picks his fruit at. And, you know, I hope that Woodstock chooses to have Rain bring up some fruit to Woodstock so we can bring up the notch of fruit because all us fruit lovers, we want the best stuff and we want to try different flavors and varieties of things that we can't get when we normally are at home. And if, you know, Woodstock keeps buying just from the produce terminal, we're going to keep getting normal stuff. Not that I'm saying we got to get all this stuff, which would be nice. You know, I know they're going to get their normal stuff, but at least if Woodstock is buying their normal stuff at the produce terminal, have it bricks tested and only get fruit that's actually at least good, you know, or better. <laughs> Don't get the poor stuff, man. Don't feed us the crap. And if you guys go to Woodstock or want to go to Woodstock, please post down in the comments below that you guys want the good fruit and that Woodstock should bricks test their fruit. And also, if you want Rain to bring up some fruit from South Florida to Woodstock, post it down below in the comments because I'm sure the admins at Woodstock Fruit Festival will be watching this because that's my goal of this video. I want Woodstock to raise the fruit bar. I want you guys to raise the fruit bar by bricks testing and getting the highest quality stuff and getting a wide variety of fruit. And I'm glad that people like Rain are here to do that. So if Rain, if one of the, my viewers that are watching right now want to buy your fruit, how can they do that? New website, it's up. It's called MiamiFruit.org. And uh, we got, actually we might have a promo code for this video. Look on the description if we got one. And uh, you can order some fruit, whatever's in season. Some things are not always in season, but uh, we always have something and you can check it out and see what's what's uh, in season. Cool, so Rain, the other thing is for Woodstock, you know, what do you think will be in season? Cause it's gonna be a little bit different in August. In August, we're not gonna have all this stuff, but what do you think's gonna be available can, in August? You can turn the camera and get and get some of those because <laughs> we're gonna have long ends for sure. And uh, we're gonna have mame for sure. We'll have bananas for sure. Uh, different varieties. Every week we have different bananas. So you can't know what kind you're gonna get by that time. And we'll probably have the ends of some mangoes, the ends of some pineapple, the ends of passion fruit probably, and uh, maybe even some dragon fruit depending on the heat, how, how much heat we have at that time. All right, cool. So yeah, if you're a Woodstock admin, hopefully you'll, you know, uh, get rain to bring some fruit up. I don't think he's paid yet, so maybe that could be like a trade, like fruit for, you know, admission, something. You guys figure that out, I won't. But yeah, anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode, Please give me a thumbs up. Let me know. You know, I'm here just to get everybody better fruit, including myself, you guys, the Woodstock Fruit Festival, all the attendees, and you guys just watching. I want you guys to bricks test your fruit like I showed you guys how to do it and test the fruit before you buy it. And the cool thing is at Whole Foods, you could go to Whole Foods inside any Whole Foods. You could ask the produce guy for a sample of any of the fruit in there. And it's their rules that they're supposed to be able to sample that out to you. And so you guys could taste it before you buy it. And of course, don't forget that Whole Foods, when you're paying your whole paycheck money and lots of dollars, highest dollars for the fruit there. They have a return policy. So if you don't like the fruit, it's not ripe, take it back, let them know so that they can start buying better fruit and providing that for everybody as well. So whole anyway, foods, not whole paycheck. Yeah, whole foods. Anyway, so <laughs> not whole paycheck. hope you guys enjoy this episode. <laughs> be sure to uh, click that subscribe button right down below to be notified new and upcoming episodes I have coming out about every five to seven days. And be sure to check my past episodes. I have over, I don't know, 450 videos on this channel now describing and sharing with you guys how to eat a plant-based fruit and vegetable strong diet so you can be super healthy. And uh, yeah, be sure to check the links down below. I have other videos on Woodstock if you guys are considering going to Woodstock. Despite the fruit quality on some things not being that great, it's a great time. 
I'm you know mostly there for just hanging out for social connections and yeah the fruits definitely good but I want them to take it up a little bit higher so uh, once again my name is John Kohler with okraw.com we'll see you next time and until then remember keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables they're always the best this is John Kohler with okraw.com today we have another exciting episode for you what we do today for you guys is actually do another compilation video these guys these videos are one of my uh, favorite style of videos to do it's where I interview uh, other long-term raw 